Be a light to the world. 
Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the blessing you've given to us at this time. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Now, this morning I want to talk to you about the commission. The commission. Now, You are going to become commissioners. Let's quickly go to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. All right. Nevertheless, The dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee of the what? Galilee of what? The nations. Galilee of the nations or the Gentiles. All right. Verse 2. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. Wow. How many are excited about the great light? How many were in darkness and you saw a great light? What a great light Jesus is. Amen. And they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. How many were in the shadow of death? Huh? 
those at the back were not either in any, you were no shadow of no, no NATO. All right. Now, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew. Matthew chapter 4, verse 13. Verse 13, what does it say? And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum. Capernaum was Jesus' hometown and headquarters. All right? How do we know that? Because he sort of operated from there. If you have the time to read through the Gospels, you find that, that he, 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 he made Capernaum his home. But where was Capernaum? Which is upon the sea. Can you see? I'm helping you to read the Bible. Which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zabulon and Naphtali. Same places. You know, the Hebrew, the King James Hebrew um, says Naphtali. But this is Naphtali. It's the same thing. All right? It's like William and Willie. Yeah. Yeah. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, which is the same as Esaias, you see. The prophet saying, are you with me? Are you watching? Just keep watching. It's like magic. The land of Zabulon and the land of Nephtalim. This was Naphtali. Naphtali, by the way of the sea, which is next to the sea. So when we go to Israel, you see it's just by the sea. Beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Remember, it was Galilee of the nations. N nations and Gentiles and nations, same. All right. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. That one was saw a great light. This one is saw great light. And to them which sat in the region and the shadow of death, light is sprang up. So people that are in darkness are going to see light. Okay. Then Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. Matthew 5, 14. You are the light of the world. So this great light, hello, woohoo, are you okay? Everything all right? Are you okay? Feeling sleepy? No problem. It's not abnormal to feel sleepy. Early in the morning, you're like a soldier. You're hard, isn't it? Hardness. All right? You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Okay, are you excited to be a light of the world? Congratulations, your neighbors. I didn't know you were the light of the world. I'm so excited to uh, interact with you this morning, to know you, to meet with you, and have fellowship with you. I, didn't, I mean, light of the world. Wow, that's big. Tell your neighbor, that's really big. Yeah, that's really big. Light of the whole world. It's really big. I didn't know I was sitting by such an important person. Light of the world. I mean, ask your neighbor, seriously? I mean, seriously? Like, is it, is it, are you serious? Wow. And then, verse 15. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So, neither do men light a candle. So, that's where we see the word candle. Candle coming in. Amen. And put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. And you see the characteristics of this candle is that it is alone. And it's it's like it's 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 versus it's it versus the rest of the darkness. Is that not so? Psalm 102, verse 7. Psalm 102, verse 7. I watch and I am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. Is that not so? Yes. So you see that loneliness and hardness. All right, is the characteristic of the um, the candle in the dark, isn't it? Beautiful. And um, you see that Jesus Christ, our great example, was someone who endured many things. Hebrews chapter twelve. 
fantastic. Seeing we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us. Isn't it? Let us lay aside every weight. How many are laying aside heavy guys and heavy girls and heavy people and heavy issues? And every sin. Let's lay aside every sin. Why would God tell you to lay aside your sin if you couldn't lay it aside? Can you imagine God telling you to do something? Supposing he called you a male and tells you have a baby. You give birth. You get pregnant. And you have a baby. You go to the labor ward and give birth. Would it be fair? Would it be nice? He's telling you to do something you cannot do. Isn't it? Even if you have an operation, you can't do it. All these make-believe changes of people into whatever. It's all just games. But you can't have a baby because you are a, a, a male. What? Yeah. So, when God says lay aside every weight, it means you can lay aside. If you couldn't, he wouldn't say lay it aside. Because if he was telling you to lay aside something you couldn't lay aside, then it means he's a very wicked and unreasonable God to tell you to do something that he knows very well you can't stop. So it's possible. Tell your neighbor, it's possible. It's possible to change. It's possible to change. Yeah. Now some of you are still having some weights and some sins. All right, it's not strange. Don't let, don't think. You know, when somebody gives a testimony, I used to smoke weed, I used to smoke this, I used to drink sulfuric acid. Look, I mean, <laughs> don't think to yourself like these people change overnight. You get what I'm saying? Some of them, it was a gradual change. Even your taste for sex and your taste for even different types of sex is something that dries up. Are you listening to me? Yeah. It's not something that like just pops off and you, you find out that your love and your taste for hugs, you get it also. It's not something that just goes. You get it, yeah. And you, you, you have to dry out some of the things. They are dry. You need to dry them out. So they are withered. Yeah. So don't be discouraged when you see that, like, I mean, you feel that no one in this church is having the feelings I'm having. The feelings the guy next to you is having are more than your feelings. <laughs> Not only that he's good at smiling and shouting hallelujah, but he's having the same feelings. His amen is louder than your amen, but he's having the same feelings. Huh? <laughs> Yeah. Never, you see, when you, when, you, when you go to church, when you go to church, never think that people around are like, kind of like angels, you know. People in church are a bit like girls, you know. They look so nice on the outside. They have all this hair and all that, you know. That's, when they're in church, I mean, girls are really beautiful. I mean, are girls not nice? Are they not beautiful? Do they not look soft and gentle? And amazingly clean. But girls don't like bathing as much as, you know, you would think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. I mean, last night, uh, after all that we did, you'd be surprised that fewer girls had their bath than, than the boys. After sweating and wee wee the whole day, you'll be surprised. You may never know limited. So don't be deceived by the looks of people and think that I am the bad nut in the church. It is not true. Hello? It is not true. You are not. You are a fellow struggler. We are all struggling. 
and you have joined the stragglers. Welcome your nearest straggler. Welcome, I mean, uh, I'm so glad to know that I'm not alone in my struggles. All right. But we are never going to give up the struggle. We are not going to stop fighting. We are going to fight on. Because it's worth it. Jesus has saved us. Amen. So he said, seeing you are compassed about, amen, with, uh, what does he say? Read it. So great a cloud of witnesses. Every weight. Amen. Lay aside every weight and the sin that so, that so easily. Now that's the other thing. Easily. Like you could fast the whole day and easily get into sin in the evening. If you try to do the right thing the whole day, then the way you get into sin, it's so easy. It's like, it's like what a shock. I mean, I can't, I mean, I, I don't think there's anybody who has fallen as easily as I fall. But I didn't write the Bible. The Bible is there for us to see. If I had written it, you may have thought that, oh, this is my personal problem. Look, it is the problem easily so like you you realize that you don't even easily get into spiritual things but you easily get into sin turn to your neighbor and say i'm so glad that i'm you are like me i mean i thought i was alone and then verse two looking unto jesus amen the beginner author and finisher of our faith that means the one who started our faith and the one who is going to take us to the end of our faith who for the joy of that was set before him endured so i i've been sharing with you about loneliness and hardness jesus endured not even one of his disciples who were, what's the word you use? Waffling. Waffling. Yes, waffling. Talking a lot. Not even one of his disciples was waffling. Offered to die with him on the cross. He was all alone on the cross. And they were, they were, they were down drinking orange juice as they were looking. He said, how is it Jesus? Wow, it must be difficult up there. And Jesus was all alone on the cross. Amazing, isn't it? So that you think you are in a group and then you find that you are all alone. Huh? And in a sense, you are alone. In a sense, you have to fight. You don't have to assume because like if I overcome temptation, it doesn't make you overcome temptation. You have to overcome and I have to overcome. Yes, I have to make it and you have to make it. So even though we are in a group and we are all fellow strugglers, my making it doesn't make you make it. It's like going to school. If I pass, it doesn't make you pass. I may love my son, I may love my daughter, but she has to pass her own exam. I can't pass an exam for, on behalf of someone. So, hello, I've written this. It's on behalf of my son. Make him a doctor. There's nothing like that. So, you have to go through your own examination. Are you listening to me? Back to verse 2. Who for the joy that was set before him endured nothing less than the cross. Now, in Madame Tussauds, I don't know if they still have. How many have not been to Madame Tussauds yet? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Father, help them to go to Madame Tussauds in Jesus' name. It's worth going. Now, they used to have, I don't know, somebody can tell me. 
uh, a place where they had where they showed how they used to kill people how they used to execute people i mean they showed some guillotine different things i don't know cutting the people up and how in history people have been executed now one of the there are different ways like they could tie you to four horses one of your leg one arm here one arm here one arm here, one leg here, and then there are four horses, and then they whip the horses this way. So it, the horses start to go away, and then to divide you into four pieces. You get it? And how many have watched this film, Shaka the Zulu? Shaka the Zulu? Yeah, it's also... Another worth watching, you see they kill people by impaling, which is they stick a spear into your bomb bomb, and then they lift you up with, on the bomb bomb, and then you, you'll be up there shaking like this. And it's just something. Are you with me? Hello, are you still around or you are? I'm saying that these are different ways of dying. But now we have electric chair, we have an injection. We have hanging. You know, hanging, you, you people die when you do it well. People die within, you know, seconds. They go off. But unfortunately, with the hanging, sometimes people don't die. Yeah, Clint Eastwood has a film where he was hung and he didn't die. <laughs> he came off and followed the people who hung him throughout the film. <laughs> He followed the people who tried to hang him. So the whole film is about him finding the people who hanged him. And they, they, did it. they were not supposed to hang him and they hanged him. So that's the whole film. Because sometimes people, the people don't die because it just pulls the neck. And then they, don't, they, they, they can squeeze themselves. And unfortunately it is sometimes, so they go and it doesn't work. Then they have to go again, you know. And sometimes it, the head comes off too. That's also another, you know, Chemical Ali, the guys in Iraq, when they had the, they executed Saddam Hussein, the one they executed after him, his head came, his head came off. They were not expecting that, but it came off. It is me very messy. You know, so these are different ways. Now, when Jesus came, the method, you know, you don't know why I'm talking about Madame Tussauds and all these things. I'm trying to say that. The method that was being used commonly was to nail people to the a cross and let them die slowly. Now, when we talk of you, you, you how many have had a pin prick before and you were feeling some pains? Now, Jesus was nailed and suspended naked. Do you see? And I, I, I think he was, they were naked, really naked. But of course, you know, in all the pictures, they have these little panties that they put on just for fine protocol. But in reality, you know, he was naked. And this is what Jesus endured, you know. So from today, when you go home and you are going through trials and pressure, you know, just tell yourself, look, I don't see no nails in my, in my hands. I don't feel myself hanging from a cross. I don't feel myself withering and dying, you know. So it's not so bad, you know, because he said that you have not resisted up to the shedding of blood. Hebrews 12, put it back there, please. You have not resisted unto blood, you know. You've, you've been fighting, but it's not yet to the point of dying. So, I mean, you, you, should, you should try to overcome, you know. Pornography, you should, you should overcome. It is not up to blood. You know, you, you cannot be a pornographer. You know, are you a pornographer? Are you a photographer? Are you a pornographer? <laughs> huh? God forbid. Yeah. You cannot be, I mean, I mean, using your anus instead of, so for one or feces, only feces. Ah. Cannot be. Cannot be a fornicator. Cannot be a thief. Cannot be a drug addict. Cannot drink sulfuric acid. 
You cannot be going for injections of HIV. From unknown genitals. Mercy. Mercy. You can how many realize a shadow of death is like you are almost dead. Huh? Joining gangs, fighting with knives. No. You are you are going to fight on for Jesus. Amen. 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 Are you are you there? Beautiful. So go back to Hebrews 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, who endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne. So the other thing is to despise the shame. Loneliness makes you feel sh- ashamed sometimes. Oh, I'm so ashamed. I'm the only one who's not this. I'm the only one who's not that. I'm the only one who had this. I'm the only one who went through. Don't worry. Jesus despised shame. Don't be ashamed in the church. Don't be ashamed. Amen? Because the church is a place for you to come with fellow shame, shameful people. Yes. So don't be ashamed, ashamed of your shame. All right? Don't be ashamed of your shame. Jesus is changing your life. And you must endure suffering, but also shame. All right? And don't be a- Jesus was ashamed. Look at he was hanging there. All the people that he had ministered were all looking at him. I'm sure some of them were just looking downwards like, oh, they don't want to look at what we are seeing. Hmm? Mercy. We don't want to look too much. In fact, we don't want to look at all. Some of them were just looking on the ground. And maybe Jesus was crying at a point. Maybe from the pain, he was crying. Well, they didn't, they didn't write that, but it's likely, it's possible that he was crying. And when the people were shouting, and you see some of the people he has healed, and the people, wicked people, and he was feeling sad. You know, how do people are like, like that? Peter had also dashed. Peter was now eating sandwiches somewhere. You know, he was having breakfast. Yes, he was having breakfast, full English breakfast, and checking his Wi-Fi to see whether things were okay. And he, Jesus, was on the cross. But meanwhile, he has appointed him as the head of the church. He doesn't seem to care about the appointment. The only person who was left with him was a small boy, John. And these Mary Magdalene's and others whom people didn't respect. And that's why when he came back from the dead, he went, he passed, he saw her first. Mary Magdalene and others, because these other ones, they, are, they, are, they, they were not there for his shame. Yes. They were not there for the shame. So don't, don't, be, don't, be, don't be ashamed. Don't, don't let shame drive you away. I'm the only one who doesn't have a beloved. I'm the only one who did this before. I'm the only one who has done it. No. Don't be ashamed. Once you testify, you know, it drives away the shame. It rather shows the miracle power of God's grace that you are around. Yes. Hallelujah. So, verse 3, verse 3. And you have not yet, verse 3. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. What is a contradiction? It is something that is opposite of what it should be. Yeah. Like, I shouldn't really be going through this, but I'm going through it. You know, so don't don't be worried when you go through the contradiction of sinners. All right, now sit down for a moment, please. Now, now that God has saved you, you need to have something to do with the rest of your life. Amen. Now that I've found Christ, what am I going to do with him? Now that we found Christ, what, what are, are we, we going to do with, with him? him? Now, now that you found Christ, the main thing is to have something to do in this life. Do you know that governments, governments, you know, one of the main jobs of a government is to find or create or make jobs. 
Jobs. Are you saying like American way kind of like? Jobs. I don't know why they say jobs. Sounds like a job. One of the main things is to create work. Jobs. Jobs. Jobs for the boys. So now we have, we've arrived on earth. Snake planet. And as we are here, what shall we do next? What are we going to do? What should we do? So God has given us something to do. And that is so beautiful. And I'm so excited. And that job is called the commission. The commission. Okay? Or the great commission. But I want to call it the commission. Okay? And the United Kingdom, British government has embassies and they call them the High Commission, British High Commission. In all the countries, Commonwealth countries, British High Commission. And then the leader of the commission is the High Commissioner. Have you heard that before? The High Commissioner. So now you have a commission. See, it's an English word, you know. And that's because the word commi- great commission is not in the Bible. But people call the instruction, life's instruction that Jesus gave. They call it the great commission. So I'm sure like English people calling it. It's Hudson Taylor actually who popularized the term great commission. But it's the commission. So, you know, like they just look at this whole thing. So, this is the commission. You know, this is sort of like the embassy. All right. So, you and I have a commission. Okay. And that commission must occupy us for the rest of our lives. Now, if you follow what I'm saying, you will have a job for the rest of your life. Yes, you will. You will be kept busy, occupied active, engaged, and fruitful for the rest of your life. If, if, you, if you take it seriously. You see, but like the song was said, many people say the commission is being completed. But it hasn't. Because you'd have always finished. They started a long time and they finished. But this commission was to preach the gospel to the ends of the world. It was extensive. It was an obligation to disperse themselves, to spread themselves into the world and preach to all creatures. So, in Matthew 28, let's start from verse 18. You see the commission. And the commission for Christians is actually found all over the Bible, but we mostly emphasize on this, the few ones that we see in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and so on. But here it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, so this is the commission, the commission. This is the job, the job of jobs. This is what is going to occupy you for the rest of your life. Are you excited about finding a job? I mean, you thought you were coming to a camp and you came and got a job. Clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. You got a job. A job for life. Amen. Now notice. Notice. Jesus came and spake unto them. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatsoever I commanded you. Lo, 
I am with you even unto the end of the world. So the first thing I want you to notice about the commission is that number one, it goes all the way to the end of the world. <laughs> so if you no know end of the world, no end of this commission. Yeah. I'm with you to the end of the world. So these are the highlights of the commission. You got to go through the highlights. You got to go through the main points in your commission. And then you know the main things in the commission. And one of the main things is that it's to the end of your life. It, it, it's not over till it's over Amen. completely. Until you are in a coffin and you knock the coffin like that. And you realize you are actually in and you are in the ground. Then your commission is over and the job is over. But until then, you cannot retire and say, no, now I am doing something else. Doing what else? What else are you going to do? This is the job that has been given to us. And look at what has happened. You know, in this time, many people think the commission is completed. And, and most Christians sit at ease. And most Christians say, like, if God wants to save people, I'm sure he's going to have a way to save them. He's probably organized the gospel to them somehow or them to the gospel somehow. But there's no somehow in this thing. It is all about deciding to follow the commission. And because Christians have not followed the commission, all right, the world has fallen to other religions. Yes. Actually, the early church, the early Christian church, took the gospel from, from where? Where was the church? Hello? Where was the church? Where did the church begin? Can, do you have maps here? You need a map and a Bible. Amen. Where was the early Christian church? Huh? Jerusalem. Then the commission took them to Europe. If you want to go to, what do you call it? Um, a place to go to is, um, is it Greece? Greece. Where, where Athens and um, those places where Paul went to. Turkey, Turkey, Turkey. Turkey. I think Ephesus and Corinth, Philipp the Philippians, those places. So they moved there. So that was the first effort. And then the, it spread into Europe. What we know as Europe. Okay. And to Libya and just the northern countries. And that was it. And then the commission is completed. <laughs> How can it be completed? So then came people like William Carey. And William Carey said, look, since the early church, this commission has not been completed. And whenever he said it, he was a candle in the dark. He was alone. People said, if God wants to, we don't know what's happening. There. We have a lot of problems here. And if, if God wants those people to be saved, he will find a way of getting them saved. We don't know how. Somehow the, the gospel will come to them or they will come to the gospel. And so, the, so then he went to India, to India, and that inspired many other people. The Moravians at um, uh, Zinzendorf took up this commission seriously. And then William Carey, and then Hudson Taylor and some of the other people to China, to here, to here, and they went to the ends of the world to some, to, to some extent. All right? And many, many people after that, relapsed back into becoming non-commissioners. You get it? And in this era, you find out that the commission is still neglected largely by the church, by a poor church always begging for money. Yeah. 
and always preaching about prosperity. I've never seen a group preach more about prosperity and not have the prosperity that they are always talking about. If there was ever a group always begging for money and always talking about money and not having money, like Chris, like the group is the answer for that question. Which group is always talking about money and never having enough money and never having the money they talk about and only being in debt up to their necks? And the answer is the Christian church. You know, like an exam question. What group is there in the world that is always talking about money and that don't have enough money and never have money and always beg for money? Answer, options. The circus, number two. The school, number three. The hospital, number four. Uh, the government, number five. The church. Choose one. What's the answer? The church. <laughs> Yes. Talking about it, never having it, begging for it, teaching people how to have it, asking for it, and not having it. Amazing. And this is the reason. Because why should God supernaturally give you money? To do what? To do what? To do NATO. God wants to give us money so that we do his work. But you can't have the money without doing the work. Because there's a reason for the money. Are you listening? Yeah. And then came the Holy Ghost pouring out, pouring out of the Holy Spirit. And the pouring out of the Spirit led people from the Pentecostal world to go again to all the world. And the Pentecostal outpouring brought in people like... Um, the assemblies of God, the church of God, and those churches spread again. Again they spread, and they went to all the world. Now we have come to another era where the Holy Ghost is pouring on you. Amen. Amen. Holy Ghost is pouring on you, and you are going into the world. You are going into the world. So let's go through the commission, and let's see so that we can be sure we are Fulfilling the commission, Matthew 28. Go ye therefore. So highlight number two. First one is that it's going to the end of your life. Highlight number two. It's going is necessary. Going. You can't sit there and not go. Going is necessary. Traveling. We'll be traveling. We'll be traveling. We'll be traveling. We'll be traveling. Day and night, there's always going to be movement. You cannot sit in one place and fulfill the great commission. Amen. Amen. Why? There are many reasons for that. One is that, you know, you sometimes preach and the place around you becomes saturated with you. And you need to move. You know, I don't know how it happens, but somehow the place around you gets saturated with you so you seem to need to go to a new field otherwise you get bogged down and you seem at a point to be fruitless yeah so when the church doesn't move it becomes it steadily declines now as we have you know, look, if I, have, if I decided not to move, I'd be in Kolegono today. With the, most of my members would have left. Yes, for one reason or another. They criticize me, talk about me. Wouldn't have come to know England. Because we're okay there. Yeah, wouldn't have come to know England. But coming here, and going to Switzerland and going to other places have been an outreach. It doesn't reduce the souls we want there. It makes you even win more souls back home. But if you st- keep staying and you see that churches which stay, the churches get finished. Look, look on the Christian television and see. Many of the churches are finished and finishing. 
Yesterday, I, oh, a few days ago, I met someone. I asked him. I, I preached at a church in, at a church in uh, in Germany, once, and I asked, oh, is there, is, "How is the church? The church is not there anymore." The first, the past, they, they sacked the pastor, and uh, after that, the the church itself it does not exist anymore. Many churches I know do, do not exist. I I was ordained in a church here in London, in London Victory Church. It doesn't exist anymore. Ma churches get finished. There's a, a there's a church I remember, uh, Carpenters something church in America. I kept on looking for it and, and I found it didn't, doesn't exist anymore. Or is it just not there? And many churches, the pastor stays in the church and the attendance gradually reduces. Gradually. Re that's how, if you don't com fulfill the great commission, it gradually reduces under your very watch. That's how it is. Yes. If you don't move, it just finishes right where you are. Yes. So that there needs to be movement. And sometimes you are the person who has to move. Yes. You need to keep moving. Moving on. And that's why sometimes even when you are in the same place, God keeps you. Like right now, we are still in the UK, but it's like we've moved into First Love Church. All of you were not in existence before. You just were not there. We would have been in Cardin Road praising ourselves over there. And that's why people were going to be shocked when they get to heaven. Say, yeah, you are happy, eh? Papa! And then you have some slips. Are you there? Shake your neighbor and say, neighbor. Are you around? It's time for the commission. No, I don't feel you shaking. You don't know the person. It could be your future husband or wife. Could be your future husband or wife. Hmm. Are you still around? Matthew 28, please. We are on the commission. Go ye. Tell somebody I'm going. I'm going. Go somewhere. Preach, Preach somewhere. somewhere. Go somewhere. Go somewhere. Go somewhere. Teach, somewhere. Teach somewhere. So going is important. We'll be traveling. Is there a song like that? Are we justified in staying here while so many are perishing without means of grace in other lands? We must take every chance of doing good to the lost. Oh, yeah. We will be laboring. We'll be traveling day and night. Mm. Are we justified in staying here while so many are perishing? Are we justified? Without means of grace in other lands. We must take every chance of doing good to the lost. We'll be ready. Oh, oh, oh. We'll be laboring. We'll be traveling day and night. Mm. Are you ready, ready at 20. Are you ready? I'll be ready at 20, ready for the war. One of my missionaries landed in a town called Kachungo. Kanchungo. I was so happy when he told me that he wants to go to Guinea Bissau, a place where the gospel is very small. The Portuguese people, very small. And I told him, go to Kanchungo. And he landed there and started winning souls there. We'll be laboring, we'll be traveling day and night. We are commissioners. We have a commission. And the commission involves movement. Yeah. So, the people who don't like moving at all are phlegmatics. They just want to stay there. 
If you have a phlegmatic, so many areas there will be no movement. Including sex. Yes. Because the, the, it's not only in the Great Commission, but in every area, there's no movement. That's what we call cadaver. Yes. Yes. So, the failure to move in life now comes to a very dangerous area and that the area of the commission so I don't want to move I don't want to move from this town all the time you know whenever I go around I'm urging people to move in America I would urge them move move when they were in New York I said move out of New York Try to move. There's nothing like the Great Commission. There's nothing like be, becoming a commissioner without movement. There's nothing like it. It cannot be. Yes, a high commissioner. And unless there's movement, if if you, if you if you don't accept that, you can never be in the commission and fulfill the. Commission. It, it just doesn't cannot happen. Yes, it can. You, you have to move. So within the church, there's movement. Like even just, okay, we have, let's go to this park or this place and do an out. Let's go here and sing. Let's go, let's do, let's get up and go on Saturday or get up and move to somebody's room, house to house, talking to people. I mean, no movement, no commission. And it's a commission to the end of your life. I'm moving. You think it's the first camp I've had? You think it's the first time I'm having a camp? What do you think? Is it the first time? Are you not seen the Makane? All those things are camp meetings. <laughs> and you guys are having a camp. This is the fourth camp on the trucks. Yes. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no. And, and I went to Switzerland. Separate, and I went to Italy, and I'm planning. I, I have a camp in uh, Rwanda, in Uganda, in Tanzania. All these countries, camp meetings. There's nothing like fulfilling the Great Commission without moving. So the less moving, so and within where you are, there's movement. I've got up. I'm going here on Sunday morning. I'm moving. You can't just wait. You know, just lazily arrive in church. But there's, there's no movement. Yes. You can't just lazily arrive in church. If you do that, it's not going to work. And then there will be the movement outside the UK to become a missionary to foreign lands. We must take every opportunity to reach people in other lands who don't have means of grace. Yes. We'll be traveling will be laboring day and night. Within the UK, to Newcastle, to the north, to Scotland, to the, la- to the islands, to Ireland, to places, to corners, to universities, to new places where there are people. You may have to even move and go and do a course in a university so that you can be there and do a course there. Say, I came here. I came to do this course just because I wanted to be near you within striking distance. Yes. I mean, what is the, the, how far does your gun shoot in, in, in the army? The one that you, the long one? 17.2 kilometers, 17.2 kilometers. 17.2. So if what you are trying to strike is 25 kilometers away, what do you do? What we do is we just have to move. Closer, so that we can get the radius. So you move the gun closer within striking distance. One, one day I called a brother and I asked him, I need you to go to uh, a place to evangelize. But he couldn't 
find a new resource. I said, go to the university. He has already been to the university. I said, go to him, find a course. So he found a course in the university and went, applied. And he got admission and he went there. And while he was there, he was in striking distance for the church. And he did the church. Geneva. Yes, he applied. That's how our first our mission there was by going to university. Somebody who has already been to university. Wow. And he was a science student and went and did arts. Wow. Yeah. So sometimes I'll come and say, are you, are you in school? Are you, going to, are you doing the school there? I, I don't know even if he, he, he was able to do it. But you, 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 we need to move. Yeah. That's why many pastors sit down and the church literally gets finished as they watch it. Look on the television. You see many churches are finishing. They are finishing. Yes. The, f- the church is finishing as they are watching. Where is um, where's Nanama? Nanama. Aha, uh-huh. little uh, pastor. Come, jump on stage. Baby Jet Pastor. Yeah. Now, where, where, is, your, where is your church? Uh, Nottingham, Nottingham Trent. Nottingham. So, Nottingham Trent. Now, this is a little pa- baby jet pastor who, all right, okay. L- little baby jet pastor. But don't we already have a church in Nottingham? Yes. Is it different from your church? Yes. Your father is a pastor there? Yes. Yes. So, she, she's got a father has a church. She would have been sitting in the church as one of the um, she'd have been in a choir she'd have been a TSA sing a little something for us are we justified in staying here while so many are perishing Without means of gracing other lands, we must take every chance of doing good to the lost. We will be laboring, we'll be traveling day and night. Wow! She would have been a singer. And how many, how many people do you have in your church? Um, there are about uh, 120. Yeah. Yeah. She has about 120 Woo. people. This is a baby jet pastor. Kaba Shakayana. And I tell you, our church in Nottingham may have, you see the church may be gradually reducing God forbid, but you see that maybe gradually reducing, but it's like moving. You get it? Now look at a baby jet moving and it's got about 120 members, a small girl like this. She does not even have a beloved. I'm not advertising, but I'm just informing her. She doesn't have even a beloved. Wow. So no movement, no commission. That is it. You don't move. You don't make the effort. You don't have no commission. Where is, um, thank you baby, where is Solomon? Sweden. Come with your Swedish uh, uh, people. I want the Swedish, Swedish members. Yeah. Those who are sitting down at the back, arrest them immediately. Those who are sitting down at the back. Yeah. Look at. Yeah. Keep coming. All those from Sweden. All my children from Sweden should come.
Now, how old are you, please? I'm 20, daddy. 20 years old. How old were you when you started the church? 18. 18. Look at look at his member, including his mother. His mother, where is his mother? This is his, the, the pastor's mother. Wow! An 18 year old boy. And he went to Sweden. He was, were you not in England somewhere? I was in England, Milton Keynes. You were in Milton Keynes? I was in Milton Keynes, daddy. And um, you said that I, sh- I can go to Sweden because I wanted to go on the missions. Yeah. And you said that I should do my university. So you said, why don't you go to Sweden and do the university and try and start the church? So I said, okay. Wow. Look at that. We'll be traveling. Yeah, find a reason to travel and then you, you, you do something on the way. Instead of sitting down and supervising something to get smaller. <laughs> God forbid. We'll be laboring. We'll be traveling day and night. You see? So instead of him struggling, do you have sins? Do you have sins? Personal sins? Plenty. That Plenty. So many. <laughs> so many. You see, you, but God, the commission is not I go ye into the world and kill all your sins and end all your be holy, go into the world and be holy. No, go into the world and preach. You see, this problem with the flesh, the Bible says he knows our frame. You know, so you, if you like, you stay for just from morning to evening without bathing, and you see something. You haven't done anything, you are smelling. I mean, just by existing in the world. By breathing. You breathe on somebody, and, you're, and you see that the person is being dizzy, it's becoming dizzy. year old. Look at this. Carried all these people. How many people did you bring from Sweden? Um, we were 17 all together. 17 people. And not, that's not from Nottingham or from Birmingham or from Leeds or Leicester or Newcastle or whatever. From Sweden. Lolo Plain has brought them. A Lolo Plain has brought them here. Huh? Amazing. So, go ye therefore, I'm saying, and you see, Solomon is 20 years old, but that's not the end. I mean, he has to be 50 years old, that's in 30 years time. If I'm alive in 30 years time, I'll be like 80 something, getting to 90. See, but by that time, you've not yet even reached my age. Now, Yes. Yes, in 30 years from now, you'll not yet be my age today. And yes, so it's like, it's to the end of the world. So the commission is not, it's not a job for you just for today. When you find a beloved one day, you have a, your wedding is going to be very nice, by the way. Your wedding is, and when you have a very nice wedding, and you go for a honeymoon, and you come and you marry, maybe you have children, and so, still, the commission is on. It's to the end of the world. So whatever, I don't know, maybe you become an, what are you learning in school? Uh, Architecture. Architecture. So if you become an architect, it's still, the commission is on. You'll be a commissioner as an architect. I'm a doctor. I'm I'm still a medical doctor. It has, it has, it has never stopped me from finishing my school. You better finish your school and you better not fail. I didn't fail no exam, I tell you. All the seven years. So if you are failing your exam, you are not following me. Yes. You don't fail no exam. Lift your hand. Father, every exam will be passed in the name of Jesus. Amen. You must finish in grand style. And you are a commissioner. Student commissioner, architect commissioner, doctor commissioner, whatever. You are a commissioner and you are traveling day and night. It doesn't affect those things. Those things are on the side. Yes. But there must be movement. A 
and there will be movement. And when God says to you, see that island, go there. Live there, you and your young wife. Be there and give your life there. Teach children. Did I give you how to shine your light? Shine your light. How you shine your light? I didn't hear you. A guide to the blind. Instructor to the foolish. Teacher to little children. And number four, an example of what you are teaching. And number five, pointing your light at the darkness. Number eight, seven, six, making effort to make sure the light is not hidden. And number seven, be a missionary. Why are you not a missionary? There's a song for that one. There's a song for everything. Clap for these wonderful Swedish. Thank you, Sweden. Wow. Eighteen. Huh? And it's twenty now. Do eighteen year olds do bad things? Many, many bad things, isn't it? Some of you have done grown up things. Although you were teenagers. Isn't it? Like you were thinking that your parents cannot even imagine what you are doing. Huh? So, highlight number one is what? It's to the end of the world. Highlight number two, there must be traveling. Okay, no, highlight number three, there must be teaching. Matthew 8, 28. Matthew 28, teach all nations. So teaching. Please, everybody here must learn how to teach. Am I teaching you something? Yes. Have you learned something since you came to the, at least you've learned a light, isn't it? To Zabulon and Naphtali. I mean, you even know something in Isaiah. How many know something in Isaiah? I mean, yeah. And, and at least I'm being able to teach you something. So you must become a teacher. Can you become a teacher? How do you become a teacher? Listen, how do you become a surgeon? How do you think somebody becomes a surgeon? Can open you, take your hat out, put it back in and all. How do you think they do? Watch one, assist one, do one. Write it down. Watch one, assist one, do one. It's in our surgery. That's how we learn to be surgeons. Watch one, assist one, do one. So watch one, assist one. So as you keep watching on YouTube, watching in the camps, watching the preaching, then you assist one, you get it, then you do one. Yeah. Watch one, assist one, do one. Yeah. That's how I learned how to operate. I was with my, my boss, the surgeon, and then I was always watching her. She was operating, operating, operating. Then I, be, I became her assistant. So when she was cutting, then I was holding. She would do this, and I, I have to help hold the instruments and assist, bring this, do this, do this, assist. Then one day I was given a chance, do one. And then my boss was my assistant. Yes, and I was now cutting. Shh. My blood was coming. Shh. And I was stopping all the blood, doing everything. Cutting, going deeper, deeper, deeper. Finding what I'm looking for. Cutting, cutting it out. And my boss was assisting me. So, so, so up to the end. The person is sewed up. Clean. I've done one. So I watched one. I assisted and I did. Yeah. Then I did again. And again, I became more experienced. 
Shaka. So a complicated thing, huh? Complicated thing like preaching and being a minister. That's the way you watch one, you assist one, you do one. Yeah, and you'll be surprised how good you'll be. You'll be better than your, you'll be better than your boss. Yeah. Look, you guys, I tell you, you know, I want you to do the ministry in such a way that we learn from you. You know, when I came here, when I came here and I saw your praise and worship, I said, wow, this is just wonderful. I mean, I mean, these are wonderful, powerful, anointed songs and beautiful. Yeah. So I've learned some, you know, this type of dancing, the dancing stars, I've been through pain. I've not heard such music before. I, I, I didn't grow up listening to such things. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. A testimony. 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 I've never heard such music. But I never imagined. But when I came to the first love church, all right, and I saw, I said, wow, wow, it's working. And then I flow with it. So you guys have to teach us who are a little older. You get it? New ways of powerful ministry. Yeah. Once the main things are in it, we'll learn from you. The main things must be in it. Anointing, it must be anointed. The word. Don't change the word. Don't bring no new word, please. Word is word. Is it not the word I'm looking at, Matthew? Is it not Matthew I'm looking at? Oh, I'm bring, I brought another. Have I brought Bartholomew chapter 14? Have I brought Bartholomew chapter 14? No, I'm doing Matthew. And I'm telling you, go. I'm reading the English words and I'm, I'm telling you the English word. That's the point is the word in the verse. Go ye, and ye is you. Mm. <laughs> teach. So teaching, you must become te- teachers. What's the secret for teaching? Again, watch one, assist one, do one. Again, watch one, assist one, do one. Yes. How do you think little baby jet pastors? Where's my baby jet? Stand, stand up here. How do you think my baby jet pastor learned how to preach? She you think she's been to a Bible school? She's in a school. What school? What school? What are you learning in school? Law. Hey. Law. She's still studying. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, you study. But you, you learn how to preach. How do you learn how to preach? How do you learn how to preach? You got 100 feet. I watch the videos mainly. Watch the videos mainly. And listen to them. Listen. Watch. Listen. Yeah. Hmm? So you, you must be listening. Like this camp, you have to listen to it over. Because you see, sometimes you were feeling sleepy as I was preaching. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I keep on going over. You think I'm not? How many realize as I go over you, you are understanding it better, isn't it? Yeah. As I keep going over, you are understanding what it means to be a candle in the dark, isn't it? You even know Isaiah, isn't it? And Matthew chapter 4, isn't it? Verse 13, isn't it? And Matthew chapter 5, you are the light of the world. So, I mean, at least you got three verses. For all my efforts, at least three verses. You got it. And now we are learning how to be commissioners. Yeah, commissioners. Amazing. Watch one. Do one. Again, watch one. Assist one. Do one. One more time. Watch one. Assist one. Do one. Amen. And you'll be surprised how anointed and powerful you'll be. Don't listen to your flesh. Anytime your flesh says, hey, bad boy. So, no, I'm like Elijah. I mean, Elijah was a man of 
Like I'm not a bad boy. I'm like Elijah. I'm a, I'm Elijahic. I'm Elijahic. Elijahic. How do you say it in English? Elijahic. How do you say it? say it with your English? Elijahic. 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 Wow. Elijahic. Say it with your. Uh, Elijahic. Elijahic. <laughs> so when when the devil is telling you you are lustful, you are. Uh, 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 you, 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 you want uh, you want more t- hugs that you don't you shouldn't have a hug you want more. what will you say I'm Elijah I'm Elijah somebody would think it's electric but it's not electric. I'm Elijah ask your neighbor are you Elijah what do they say Elijah is a man of like passions I'm very Elijah. Tell somebody I'm very Elijah. Very Elijah. Look at it. That's why we say Elijah was a man subject to like passions, like as we are. That's Elijah. He was subject to like passions, as we are. Wow. Wow. So that's what it means to be Elijah. Elijah. Tell your neighbor, look, I'm, I'm really Elijah this morning. <laughs> All right. Back to Matthew. We are looking at the commission. We are looking at the commission. Go ye therefore, teach. How many are going to become teachers? Now, the th- f- how many highlights have I given you? Three. Highlight number four. All nations. Yes. All nations. Every country. Now, UD, we are in about 90 countries. But that is too small. We want to be in 150 countries. Yes. We need to be 100. How many nations are there in the United Nations? I think there's like about 200 nations. Huh? 180? Yeah. No, so I don't even know why we aim for 150. We are aiming for all nations, which is what is written there. Every single nation, including Morocco, Libya, Afghanistan, I mean, Iran, Iraq, Pakistan, India, every, every nation. All nations. Why should we leave some nations out when he's asked us to go to all nations? No. Amen. Amen. How many are going to go somewhere? Go to all nations. Yeah. So you can't leave some nations out. Who's going to go to those nations? Who's going to go to those nations? (laughs) You see, I don't want no attitude to develop in you of like, oh, if, if God somehow wants to get the gospel to all nations, he will somehow bring, I don't know, somehow maybe by a butterfly or he will, he will put the message into a shark and let the shark swim through the sea. Or he will put the message on an eagle and the eagle will fly a long way and the eagle will arrive there. Look, none of these methods are going to be the method. God has one method. Go ye. Go ye. You go and teach all nations. So you are going to become expert teachers. Oh, yes. And you have a lot of things that are going to help you to be expert teachers. Go somewhere. Then the next one is baptizing them. That's why we now have baptism day. Happy salvation day. Do you have happy baptism day? Or happy salvation day? Is it the salvation day that you do the baptism? Yeah, we're now having happy salvation day all the time. And apart from happy salvation day, we also have Holy Spirit baptism often in church. Because people need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and baptized in water. How many have not yet speaking in tongues? Not yet. Raise your hand and give me a wave. Not yet speaking in tongues. Give me a wave. All right? 
we, we need to pray. You need to be, we need to pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, you can't overcome these things. A lot of things. You can't live as a Christian without the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So happy Baptist, happy Salvation Day is going to come into your life. And you're going to be there. Amen. Amen. So how many highlights do you have? Five. Five. And number six, power. Number six, all power is given to me. Notice in verse 18, all power. You see, without power, you can't go nowhere to do no NATO. Go where to do what? NATO. But you see, with power. Don't think that, you know, a little baby jet pastor is working just by uh, advice. There's power working. Power, because the other, nobody will say, my, my lady pastor has advised me. As to, somebody who is not even married. Somebody doesn't even have a beloved, but she's anointed with the Holy Ghost. And so when you speak, it's not your own words. It's the words of God. It's the words of the Holy Spirit. And he said, that's why he said, all power. You need power to be able to minister. To be able to do the work of God. It takes power. I could not be here without power. There is a power that is working. And even governments recognize it. They realize that, look, the people are committed. There must be something keeping us here. Nobody is being forced to, to be here. There's no gate fee. There's no gate fee. You are all young people, full of energy, full of life. No one is forcing anybody to be here. Are you being forced to be here? Are you here against your own will? No. It's your own decision to come. It's free. You don't have to. You are straight from university. You don't have to do it. I mean, you are free. You can do whatever you want to do. So a certain power draws you to the work of God. And I'm telling you, that power is available now for 5,000 children to come right here in the UK. Yes, 5,000 children. It's possible. 5,000 children. And our church is going to be more and more multicolored. Yes. Different colors of people. Yes. Are going to be dotted all over. And one day people will ask, what color is your church? You will say, our church is like a piano. It's black and white keys. We We have different keys. Church is like a piano. Yeah. It's true. You watch. It's gradually. It's, it, will happen. it will happen. And don't think of grown ups, hardened grown ups, teachers of children. You know, if there's one point that makes me very happy in this camp, is this particular point teachers of children. Yeah. Go and teach children about God. Yeah. Many old dogs cannot be taught new tricks. True or not true. All right? Now, Mark 16. Amazing. Great commission by Mark. Now, you're going to be a commissioner for the rest of your life. Tell your neighbor, I am introducing myself as great commissioner, so, so, and so. I don't want to use the word high commissioner because I don't want you to be confused with an ambassador, an earthly ambassador, which is far lower than you. You are great. A great commissioner. A great commissioner. You're not a high commissioner. It's not as high. It's great. Great commissioner. Is it not amazing? Okay. Mark 16. Verse 14. Afterward he appeared to them and said, Go ye, go ye therefore, and into all the world. So now let's look at this great commission in Mark. 
So this is Mark's commission. What are the highlights of Mark's commission? All right. Again, number one, going. <laughs> and this time, go ye. You go. Not here am I. Send them. <laughs> here am I. Send him. He looks like somebody who wants to die. Who was that? Who said that? Who said that we should send somebody who looks like someone who wants to die? Where are they sitting? At the back, the guys who are sitting at the back. You guys at the back there, is that that what you said? That we should send someone who wants to die to go? You didn't say that? Okay. All right. Tell somebody, I'm ready to go. Anywhere. Anywhere. Now, ask the neighbor whether are you phlegmatic, are you choleric, are you, what are you? What did they say? Phlegmatics? Tell your neighbor, even though I'm a phlegmatic, I'm ready to go. Wow. Now, look. Go ye into all the world. So the next highlight is all the world. So in case you say, oh, that's not a nation, it's just an island. All the world has included. So you see that part, this commission was what? Extensive. Yes. Go ye into all the world. So it includes territories. Territories, islands, nation states. You know, places, half areas, <laughs> all the world. <laughs> it's not just nations. So, oh, yeah, we're going to this nation. You go to this nation, but in, in this place is out. So we're going to all the world. Now, that's why we're going to be busy till we die. How many realize that it's extensive? How many realize this, this mission is extensive and requires us to disperse ourselves? into the inhabited globe yes everywhere in the inhabited globe amazing Amazing. and then so how many highlights you have number one is going this is mark's great commission yeah mark's great commission all right and it's number one going number two it is into all the world and then number three is giving the topic for the preaching preach the gospel topic for the other one was teaching so teaching you watch one you assist one you do one now this one is preaching the gospel so go into the world and preach the gospel now that's why i wrote a book called how you can preach salvation yes how you can be that that is a very important so that's a book you need to specialize in that book and depending on the type of soul you are getting you choose the method there are many ways to kill a cat you can drown it you can poison it you can knock it with a hammer you can i mean beat it with a stick you can shoot it you can suffocate it you can strangle it you can hang it all are methods of killing cats so you look at the cat and you see now one day um i went to visit someone and i saw a man there and i said who is this man he said this man has come to catch the cats in the house he said they had so many cats he said that there are so many that the man comes every year to come and catch some and take because people eat cats so the cats in the house were wild yeah they are not these domesticated cats who come and meow meow no 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 there's nothing like meow meow here so he had a special strategy so when god sends you to a place with wild cats you have a special strategy do you want to know the strategy that the man 
Okay, he had a net. He had a net and a sack. And then a, I think a stick. Yeah. So he would just be timing the, you know, then he throws it over them. Hey, they are wild. Yeah, the wild. Then he puts them in a sack. And you see them, they're wild. Small, small cats. So when you see different type of souls, you see like a pig, if you take a pig, you can't just kill a pig. The neck is too fat. You see, it, it, the, the, you, can't, it, you can't even know where the neck is. The neck has filled the whole front. So you don't know where the neck of the, of the pig is. Isn't it? Yeah. So that's why when they're going to kill a pig, they shoot it. Yeah, they shoot it in the head. Yeah, because you, you can't cut, the, like, other, you can't see the neck. You know, some people have a big neck here. Like that. So now, different souls you see. This soul you look at is like a cat, so I have to preach heaven and hell. This one is like a pig, I have to preach love. This one is like, a, how do you kill cows? Cows, they have a they have a place they walk them through. Then there's a machine when they walk through. You know, that it turns, it holds the cow and turns it upside down and, and slides the head like that. Yeah, it's just whoosh. it's hanging. Then they slide the head and then the blood comes. Yeah, yeah, wild. Mm. Different strategies. So some people have to preach healing. When I went to certain nations where there's few Christians, I preach healing. Everybody, oh, they, they want, please pray for us. We need healing. We need healing. So we are come for the healer. You get it? So how to preach salvation, you need to be a specialist. If you want to be a commissioner, that book must be a second Bible to you. Each time you look and say, I'm going to use this strategy. Yeah, this time I'm going to preach about love. I'm going to preach about healing. I'm going to preach about heaven. I'm going to preach about hell. I'm going to preach about a judgment. All right? Different types of preaching. All right? Different strokes for different folks. Are you listening to me? Are those at the back listening to me? There's somebody down there in a yellow, in a yellow, uh, what do you call it? I don't know if she's with me. Is she, is she, is she part of us in a yellow? something hmm? wow are you listening to me do you want to continue listening to me are you going to preach the gospel matthew's commission didn't say preach gospel he said teach yes he said teach. so it means we have to learn the teaching because you know everybody remembers something different and writes it differently yeah, like if, if you were to summarize, what did we come and learn here? Somebody may say, Ah, oh, I learned that I should bath as a girl. You know? I mean, that may, be so, that may be what you really remember because, like, it really struck you that you don't bath. You get it? But somebody else may say, I learned how to be a commissioner. Somebody may, may say that I learned how to be a candle, how to be a light in the dark. I learned how to shine my light. Yeah, it depends. I learned to be a sparrow on the housetop. It depends on what you remember. So, Mark remembered the preaching topic of the gospel, but Matthew remembered the teaching part. Yeah. And so, everybody writes what he knows and what he remembers, and that's why there are different books, and we need all of them. All right? How many highlights do you have? Put it back there. Preach the gospel. And then the third one is every creature. Ah! What a commission. This, this is extensive. Ida, is that not a part of your song that is, uh, uh, is something that's extensive? I heard this you. commission was extensive. Jesus, our Lord, before he went away, commissioned his disciples mm. to go and teach all nations. This commission mm-hmm. was extensive. It was an obligation for the disciples to disperse themselves Mm -hmm. to every nation, every corner of the inhabited globe. Mm -hmm. 
to preach to every creature mm -hmm. yeah. without exception without exception without limitation mm. wow is this not a commission yes jesus before he went away commissioned his disciples and some people say the commission is what do they some people say many people say the commission is completed mm. by the ministry of the apostles mm. they say we have many souls in our own country but he told us to go to all nations if god intends the salvation of the world if he intends the salvation of the world he will somehow bring the gospel to them maybe by a shark or an eagle or bring them to the gospel he will find his own way we don't know how today most christians sit at ease today most christians sit at ease have no concern for lost sinners they have no concern for lost sinners they don't want to be they don't want to be in the dark candles in the dark they don't want to do what God said to do for the rest of their lives. And what's the next one? What, what, what else? Many attempts. Many attempts have been made. At the Great Commission. Many attempts have been made at the Great Commission. Have been made by many Christians since the days of the first apostles. There have been attempts. But I regret to report that the work of God. You regret to report has not been taken up seriously it's not being taken up seriously nor has it been prosecuted it's not being prosecuted with the zeal and perseverance it's not being prosecuted with zeal and perseverance of the early christian church the zeal that the early church had indeed there were candles indeed there were the candles dark. in the dark will you be a candle in the dark For the consideration, for the consideration of, of you who sit at ease. This is for those of you who sit at ease. I offer these observations. This is William Carey's observation. If the whole body of Christians, if the whole body, if all of us here, the whole body, entered heartily into the great commission, entered heartily into the great commission, and loved the souls of their fellow creatures, loved the souls of the creatures. More than they love themselves. More than they love themselves. And more than they love their own lives. They could become. They could become candles in the dark. Candles in the dark. They could become saviors of this world. Saviors of this world. They could become candles in the dark. How many can see this is the commission yes god is calling us to be commissioners with his commission we'll never be jobless till, till the last day when somebody tells us something to do in full-time ministry i say you don't know what there is it's you who don't want to do it yeah but for to these souls this work of souls it will never finish in our time yeah. I know when you go, you, you will listen. Look at it. Every creature. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So we are looking for people who believe, not people who are rich. Yeah. We are not looking for people who sell carpets. Or sell cars. We are looking for be people that believe. So the Great Commission is looking for believers. Amen. Amen. And the next verse. And these signs. How many want to have a life with signs and wonders? Wow. That this life of signs and wonders is for great commissioners. Miracles. Look at what's going to happen. These are the signs. Everybody standing, please, for a moment. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. We're about to take a break. These signs shall follow them that believe. Everybody standing. 
Woohoo! Somebody alive? Okay? These signs shall follow them. When you start doing the Great Commission, your life becomes a miraculous life. Amen. What other miracles are going to happen? In my name, they shall cast out devils. The devil of poverty will be cast out of your life. Amen. Devils of oppression will be cast out of your life. Amen. As soon as you start to become a commissioner, you become miraculous. You become miraculous. You become miraculous. Receive the supernatural miraculous power over your life. In my name, they shall cast out devil. They shall speak with new tongue. You start speaking new tongues. Yeah, new tongues. Yes. Even new languages, I should say. Yes. When you start fulfilling the Great Commission, we start speaking new languages. Amen. It shall not hurt them. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Amen. Things that should have killed you can't kill you no more. Amen. When you are in the Great Commission, you will never die before the time you are supposed to die. Amen. Yes. And if you die, whenever you die, once you are in the Great Commission, when you die, is a divine death. You know, the Bible says, let me die the death of a righteous man. There there are two ways to die. The death of a good person, a righteous man, and the death of the wicked. Yes. But you will never die the death of the wicked. Any poisonous thing in your life will not work on you again. And then, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. Now your hands even become powerful. Hey! You touch people and then they are healed. Can you imagine that? Somebody like you. That's why you just have to pray and believe in God. Amen. And suddenly you are so powerful. You touch people. They are healed. I never, I, I mean... I don't understand why people are healed when I pray. Because I don't feel powerful. But I'm just, what he says, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. Amen. I don't feel powerful. How many feel powerful? How many don't feel powerful? But is that when you lay your hands and the people recover. Never be afraid to pray for people. Yeah. Tell them, I will pray for you. Yeah. I'll pray for you. God will, God will touch your life. Hallelujah. Amen. And then continue, continue. Before that, before that, go back. And if they take up serpents, ah, shall not harm them. Something that should have killed you will not kill you anymore. Amen. Something that should have killed you will not kill you. Amen. They shall recover. Hallelujah. So these are the beautiful signs. What does verse 19 say? Next one. Hello. And after the Lord has spoken, he was received. So this is the last thing he said. And it must be the most important. Amen. So this great commission is the work of a commissioner. And it's the way to be a candle in the dark. Is to fulfill the great commission to the nations of the world. Lift up your hands. Father, thanks a million for this opportunity that you've given us and blessed us with. Guide us by your mighty power. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now, we are going to take a short break. We are 30 minutes behind time, but we are good time. Amen. Because we are relaxed in the presence of the Lord. Amen. So we're going to take a break for how long? One hour? 30 minutes? Forty-five minutes? Forty-five minutes is a good compromise. All right. Father, thank you for this opportunity. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's take an offering because we always do.